right, what's up, B T H I? Oh, well, I kind of went through my off season, uh, last season into this season, and now I'm going to talk about this season. Uh, the off season is not over. We're not even at spring training yet. Um, still have time to make moves. Still looking to make moves. Um, but I'm also not trying to get too rash because I have a tendency to do that. Um, oh, a trade that has not been uploaded yet. Uh, Detroit. And also a trade with the meet the Mets. Greet the Mets. Step right up and beat the Mets. Sorry, Steve. That's not because of you. That's because of David Wright's face. Um, I traded for Douglas Dilbert uh, just to be a fourth outfielder. Roger Young, it's kind of hit or miss. The last two seasons has been really hit. But actually, no, not the last two seasons. That's right. He was horrific last year. But he steals bases when he gets on base, but he doesn't get on base all that often. And it's kind of, it was fun, but. I think Dalbert or Dalbert, Dubert, Dalbert, Dalbert, Dalhair, uh, Douglas Dalhair. Um, he is going to leapfrog him, Roger Young, in my depth chart because he's had a better career. And he can play center field. And he has a better arm. Actually, I don't think he has a better arm. Does he have a better arm? I thought he had a good arm. Yeah, he has a better arm. So, going with Dougie Fresh as my fourth outfielder. So, that was one trade. And I traded a Joel or Joel Santillo. I always say Joel because jo Joel would be like people I know named Joel. I, I call him Joel. It's, it's, it beats the man. Random side note. Okay, so Tigers traded for Francisco Cordero, traded Bobby Speck, who I actually really like, but with Navarit there, and I mean, I guess I could have kept him. But I thought getting a potential extra starter, it never hurts to have too many starters, especially starters that have three more years before you have to keep them in the majors and they're already at their talents. And so I did what I had to do. And so there, I got Francisco Cordero. And I also traded Daniel D. Lee or D. Lee. And, uh, I liked him, but and with he's gonna be good. He is. He's just gonna randomly hit forty home runs. I mean, that ten is actually a thousand, and I just hit a stupid trade for a fourth starter. <laughs> I don't know. Let's we'll see. Um, oh, I signed him to be a reliever. Um, hopefully, I can do that at some point. In the history of time. Okay, so that's lineup. That's right. Don't talk about our lineup now. Did I already do it? Yeah, I already did it. Okay, so I have Tyler Garner leading off. Alberto Saldana. He's going to play short and back second for now to see. Uh, how well he does getting on base. Like, if he keeps it up with around 33, 0.33, I should say, 33% of the time getting on base, he'll stick in that second spot. If he just comes out and he's just, just you know, shitting his pants at every at-bat, then I'll move him down and probably switch it with Marcelo Amato, because I'm not so much worried about him getting on base as getting at bats because I think he's a special talent 
And even though he's a little old and a little underdeveloped, I think he's just a late bloomer. And sometimes there's late bloomers out there, and it takes them a while, but once they bloom, they're beautiful orange blossom, cherry blossom. I don't know if orange has, oranges, do oranges have blossoms? I don't know. Okay. Um, Dean Stafford, I, like, when I first drafted him, three quarters of the reason is because I'm a huge Chase Utley fan, and that's why he's the manager of the team still, and he will always be the manager of the team until he dies. Um, but Dean Stafford, he's basically Chase Utley, but right-handed. Other than that, he's basically the exact same player. I wonder if they had the same birthday. I don't know what Chase Utley's birthday is. Let's find out. December 17th. So, no, they're not. Don't, uh, they don't have the same birthday. That's just mine. But yeah, he's basically like Chase Utley. Like, the numbers he puts up are basically like the numbers Chase Utley would put up. It's actually kind of freaky. Now, I've never actually looked this up myself. I was just going by how I remember Chase Utley's stats in his career. So let's see. Oh, he, he never quite did that, but he also, Dean Stafford doesn't play at Citizens Bank Park. <laughs> um, so yeah, his average, his career average, 278, 361, 472, 833. And you look at Dean Stafford, it's actually uh, better. 310, 399, 481. But as you can see, the, the numbers are very similar. Like, let's look up uh, Peak Utley. Let's include the rookie season just because of his last eight hundred. What are we looking at there? Yeah, 287, 373, 498. I think it's is that the same. Yeah, so basically he's Chase Utley. That was the whole point of doing all of that, and we got a chance to look at how amazing Chase Utley is, and if he doesn't make it to the Hall of Fame, I will burn it to the ground. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Light up. Okay. Casemiro Rivera. Um, just being honest, guys, I've started... I've entered into a romantic relationship with Casemiro, he's my boo, you can't have him, he's mine forever, he's mine forever, he will always be mine, just need you all to understand that, um, I love him, I love him, I love him more than I love eight of my toes, that's like, that's love right there, and there's nothing like love from a Dominican man, I say, he was born on Halloween, He's just, <sighs> he's my boo, he's my boo, okay, so, yeah, he's one of the four horsemen, oh yeah, I, I, my lineup, I consider the four horsemen, Dean Stafford, obviously, Ric Flair, Yasutoki, obviously, Arn Anderson, Casimiro Ribeiro, He's Sid, and I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't care. He's fucking Sid as a four horseman. It should have worked. It needed to work. And then you have uh, Marcelo Amato. He's Paul Roma with a chance to become Tully Blanchard. But right now he's Paul Roma. And uh, yeah, that's those are four horsemen. Uh, maybe write something up about it. But I'm um, recording right now, so yeah. Casemiro Rivero, my boo, batting fifth. Then I have uh, Yasutoki batting fifth. Batting fourth and fifth. I, yeah, long day. Um, don't know if this is the right move. Probably going to flip flop him at some point, but because I'm tapping it, he's Rivero. He's going to be batting clean up until. Like, Yasutoki is just clearly better. Um, probably going to flip-flop these two. I just did that because uh, I don't remember. I didn't really pay attention to, to 6 through 9 other than that group in the right position. Uh, Jesse Honeycutt. Sleeper. 
All Star last year, had himself a good year. He's basically, even though he plays a different position, he's basically being used as the Walter Womack replacement. And speaking of Walter, it, I feel it's kind of wrong to not talk about him. Ah, I fucked that up. Um, so I feel I should talk about Walter Womack. He signed in Atlanta. I wish him the best, but not the greatest. He had a good year. Had a great year, actually. Had a good career here. Got him in the uh, mythical Edward Clinard trade, in which I got three studs and, uh, well, two studs and Walter Womack. And Walter Womack looks like he's going to have the best career out of all of them, which is funny. Um, yeah, so basically same value, same position in the lineup, bottom of the lineup, but in an RBI spot with somebody that gets on base in front of them, not ninth, you know, or anything like that. So that's where Jesse Honeycutt is now, and he proved himself to basically, basically be Walt Womack, except he can steal some bases. Look at that pretty sight right there. So, yeah, he's got left field on lock for a decade. Danny Suarez is betting after him, right? No. Well, he will be when he flip-flops with Amato, which he will in real life. Um, Danny Suarez, good guy, good hitter. Extremely inconsistent. Like, that That right there is so true. Like, he had a... Yeah, he finished the year with a 722 OPS, and yet he made the All-Star team because his OPS was either at or over 800. Like, he'll just be a... a just... God's gift to baseball. He'll be Mike Trout for three months out of the year consecutively. And then just the rest of the year, he's 40-year-old Garrett Anderson. I don't know. I'm just talking about old Angels outfielders. Although, didn't Garrett Anderson play left field in his sport? Regardless, Danny Suarez, um, amazing defender. Leave, let him patrol the center field. That's why I'm not too worried about his bat. Just keep it over 700, kid, and you'll be playing every day. Ezra Dallau. I always wanted him. I got him last year, and I ended up trading a guy who is, like, I could have really used him, but, you know, it happens with that trade. Uh, he had the greatest season second greatest season of his career and I have a strong feeling that this is literally this is it. This is it's over for Ezra Dillow after the season. Or even during the season, he's just gonna fall apart. King Kong, I feel like the first bullet hasn't hit yet. But he just put down the blonde girl and for a second, everything seems like it's going to be okay, but that first bullet's going to come, and that's why I traded for Douglas Dalbert. Dubert, or I don't know how to say his name. Rotation! Okay. Um, yeah, this is just for now. Uh, Lawrence Barber. Dark Horse signing of probably my best signing ever. Paid $6 million. He was supposed to be a reliever, and I said, fuck it. Let me see what happens if I add it to his stamina, because his stamina was already at five. And it was just like, bro, I got you, ace. And so it's worked out. 19 wins last year. Ace for my team again this year. Hopefully um, he does well. Again, I'm not expecting that same three ERA, but I'm also expecting to score even more runs in your first and run scored last year, and I'm hoping we do that again, but you you know, you never know. I just hope we have enough pitching to go with enough hitting and enough defense to be enough to win every single game we play. That's, that's as simple as that. You just do just enough to win every single game you play. Uh, Jeffrey Ash, third starting pitcher. Um, do, 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 do. Jose Mejia. I don't know why I always say it like that, but I say that like that in my head. Um, he's actually going to be my number five pitcher. Um, I'm hoping that Cordero Jr. or 
one of my numerous, one of these two, well, not those two, because he's his spots in. One of these two, hopefully, along with Cordero Jr., make it so that I can move Mejia to the bullpen, because I think he'll do really well there. And I could always use somebody to fill in this spot, because that spot is... If if you've got the mop up reliever locked down, like who, you know who your mop up relievers are, you probably play this one too much. Okay, Gail Otterson, <laughs> uh, maybe we're gonna have to spend points on him, which is part of why I'm doing this video. But yeah, Gail Otterson, he's a person there. Um, uh, that's that's a look at my potential lineup. And, uh, did I go for 10 minutes? Oh, God, I went 15. All right, I may have to randomly edit this because that's just throwing points out the window, and we can't be having that. All right, bye.